What is up, everyone? My name is James McCool here at paydirtdfs.com. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the NBA models on the site. Um, we have a nice little suite of tools that you will recognize if you have been a subscriber over at Paydirt for a while. Um, that is a feature, not a bug. I like to build models that are useful for all of DFS. And so we reuse a lot of those frameworks for different main sports like NBA. So if you've been here for NFL, then you're going to recognize some of these tools. If you are new, welcome. Um, and I hope that this is informative to you. So what we're going to look at today, we're going to look at the range of outcomes, the pivot finder, contest sims, the NBA showdown RO, and the NBA betting tool. Uh, we also have some research sheets, which I'm not going to talk about today, uh, mostly because they're not active yet. Research sheets are based on in-season data. And obviously, we don't have any in-season data to use yet, but I will make a video on that next week. Uh, it'll go over things like the defensive efficiency matchups, which everybody loves, the game logs, and the trending and ceiling tables. But for today, we're going to talk about the DFS-oriented tools and, a, to a smaller extent, the betting tools. So let's take a look at the range of outcomes. Now, if you have been with Paydirt for a while, then you're going to recognize this table. Um, this is the bread and butter model that you're going to be using to start each one of your days in terms of research. It's going to show you a lot of things like the floor, the median, and the ceiling of each individual player. It's also going to give you uh, finishing percentiles, how often they finish as the top overall score on the slate, as well as top 10. Um, and then you have salary thresholds as well. So how often they 4x their salary, 5x, 6x, and then GPP percentage which is how often they score 5x plus 10. So for example, if a player is 3K, it's $3,000, it is how often they score 5x, so 15, 5 times 3, plus 10, 25. So that's how often they hit that GPP score. You're also then going to have ownership for regular ownership, small field, large field, and cash game, as well as captain. And then you'll have LevX and ValX. So LevX is a function of leverage based on ownership and upside. And ValX is kind of a portfolio oriented version of that, right? So you can think of ValX as something that is going to tell you how much over or undervalued a player is based on their upside. And you can think of ValX as if you should include them in your player pool. So a player might have a negative Lev X like Anthony Edwards, but still be valuable in your player pool somewhere, right? He's still valuable as like a 23% exposure. So this is the range of outcomes. Um, you're going to recognize this. It's pretty much what you see at Pater, what you're used to. But one of the things that is added this year is this optimals page. So this is my answer to a very simple optimizer solution. This is what I call a pseudo optimizer. This is going to be utilizing the seed frame technology that I've developed for a lot of the main sports and using it to create um, very close to optimals. So what do I mean by that? This being a pseudo optimizer means that it is not doing an optimization process on the back end. Um, in the seed frame technology, what it's doing is it's taking the top, the local maxima, which is a fancy way of saying um, within the sample of the seed frame, the maximum projected ownership there, so the optimals from there, and using it as a global maxima in terms of using an optimizer. So a global maxima would be the top overall projected lineup that you can possibly create using the projections. A local maxima within the seed frames is the top overall projection within the seed frame sample. So this is very close to an optimizer. It will hit the global maxima more than 98% of the time. Um, and it's going to be really, really good if you just want to go and you're trying to build your SE lineup or your three max or your cash games, and you just need some optimals. Um, you can run a whole bunch of different combinations here. Uh, you can see the top overall 100 projected lineups. Um, you can also say specific players within the set, right? So you can say, uh, show, show me only lineups that have um, Jalen Brunson, Drew Holiday, and Nas Reed. And then you're only, let, let's add another person just for the hell of it, and Roy Hachimura. So now you're only going to get lineups from the seed frames that have that combination of players. So you can do a lot of the kind of the same things that you can do on a regular optimizer. Um, it's also going to show you a lot of things about what optimals look like for the slate. 
So anywhere from average to max is what you can set your salary thresholds for. If you are looking for like, I want to build a lineup that has a chance to win a GPP, like stay within the average to max thresholds here and never go below the minimums. Um, this, this is just a really nice little rule of thumb thing. And then down here, you're going to kind of get what players are actually valuable based on pay dirt projections. Um, Jalen Brunson shows up in 93% of the optimals here. Sam Hauser, Anthony Davis. You can get a good idea of the players that are most valuable based on pay dirt projections just by using this optimal set. So that is the range of outcomes in the optimals. Um, that This is going to be your bread and butter. Like I said, this is where you start every single day. Um. So next we're going to move into the pivot finder and to talk about the pivot finder, we need to talk about ownership. So say that you are looking at the range of outcomes and you're like, okay, well, LeBron James is really, really highly owned at 80%. I don't think that I really want to use him. So that's where the NBA DFS pivot finder comes into play. So what you can do with this is you can go over here and you say, okay, LeBron James is too high owned. Um, I don't necessarily want to use him. Show me all the players that are within a $500 salary and five fancy points on the median of LeBron James. And then you can go through and you can simulate all the different players that have those thresholds, and it'll show you the other players that you can use. So Anthony Edwards, you can use him. He's projected only 29%. And Jason Tatum, he's only projected at 38%. So both of these guys make for really good pivots off of LeBron James. Another thing that you can do with this is say that you're just saying, uh, if you're building out in the solver, which we have affiliate links with, with Pater and say, I just want a list of all the players that I can use to pivot to off the top five owned players on the slate. If you set up this top X owned, it'll tell you who the top five projected ownership players are for the slate. And then it's going to run through and do this process for each one of those players. And what you'll get at the end of its run is is a nice tidy list of all the players that you can pivot to and who you would pivot from. So for LeBron James, in any lineups where you just wanted to make a pivot, you could pivot straight to Anthony Edwards. For Derek White, in any lineup where you have Derek White and you want to lower your ownership and raise your relative value, just switch to Rudy Gobert, assuming that they're in the utility, right? Um, Derek White, he, you can just go straight to D'Angelo Russell. Right. So this is a really, really powerful tool, especially in NBA. You know, you can build out some optimals and then just make some quick pivots. There you go. Your lineups are built in like three minutes max. The next big thing that we're going to talk about is going to be the NBA contest simulations. So again, you're going to recognize this from the showdown season that I do for um, showdown contests and from the NFL product and from the LB product. But this is a contest simulation where what we're doing is we're using pater projections and then simulating contests based on the size and based on how sharp the field is. And then we're getting all these winners. So this is the frame of winning lineups based on these thresholds. Um, you can use this as an optimizer, though I don't necessarily suggest that you do that. I think that you can use the optimals from the range of outcomes and a better way of doing that. It's going to give you some info about what winning lineups look like. Again, very similar to what the optimals show in the range of outcomes. But caveat, this is based on only lineups that won the contest simulations, not the entire seed frame itself. So from the optimals page, that's the entire seed frame itself. And that's going to give you even the bad lineups, right? This one is inclusive of own or exclusive of only winning lineups that came from the contest sim. So this is if you were using the solver and wanting to set some thresholds for only produced lineups that have a, a min salary of 49.3 and have an ownership of 267%. That's what you would do using this information. And then down here, this is where we're going to be seeing what players are over or undervalued based on their ownership. So if we sort this by positive edge, we see that Sam Hauser and Nas Reed are significantly undervalued. Um, they show up 51 and 52% of the time in the winning lineups based on the contest sim, but only have projected ownership of 14% and 24%. So the difference between those two things is the edge that they offer. If you sort it by negative, you see that LeBron James and Josh Hart, even though they have relatively high exposure rates in winning lineups, they're still way overvalued based on their projected ownership. So Josh Hart, is just about you know twice as owned as he should be. LeBron James is over twice as owned as he should be, right? So 
Um, those are the kinds of things that this is going to be telling you. Now, I, I want to clarify something here, okay? Because I think that it's really easy to look at this and say, okay, LeBron James, negative 52% edge, I'm not going to play him. That's not the right way to think about NBA DFS. So in something like MLB or NHL or even NFL, if there's a significant negative edge like this, you can fade that player. That's fine in single entry. Like, I think that that's okay. It's still, it's still better to say he's a bad play, but you can still use him. But a significant neg negative edge in highly variant sports, that's easier to fade. In NBA, what you're really looking to do is say, okay, if I use LeBron James in my lineup, I know that I have to make up 52% edge somewhere. So if you pair him with Sam Hauser and Nas Reed, then you're okay because these guys offer a combined plus 65% edge, which offsets the negative 52% edge and then makes your total lineup with those three players plus 13% edge. Really important concept. I, if, if you take one thing away from this little tutorial video, that's what I want you to take away. You can use players with significant negative edge. You just have to offset it with players with significant positive edge. The idea is to make an entire lineup with positive edge not just have players that have positive edge, okay? Super important concept. I'll say it one more time. Make lineups that have a combined positive edge based on the combined edges of the players that you're using. Don't just use players that have positive edges, all right? There you go. So that's mostly what this is gonna be used for. Um, making decisions about where you want to find your positive edge and what negative edges you're okay with eating. Another thing that I will also point out on this, with these exposure rates, something that I have done in the past is use these as a cap for my MME exposures. So setting the cap for Jalen Brunson at 60%, setting the cap for, let's see, LeBron James at 30%, setting the cap for Jason Tatum at 20%. I think that that's totally fine to do with these contest sims. Um, these are based on pay dirt projections, the optimal ownership for these guys. So the, the optimality rate, this is what they should be owned in this GPP. So totally fine to use it that way. The next thing that we'll talk about here really quickly, and, and this one doesn't need to be too in-depth, is just the showdown stuff. Um, this is just a showdown range of outcomes based on the same data that we're using for um, the main range of outcomes, right? It's the same table. It's just built off of the showdown stuff. So typically... What this is going to have is going to be showdown one and showdown two. You'll be able to see both of the showdowns for tonight over there if you go look right now. Um, I am also adding showdown contest sims, which I have for NFL. I'm going to be adding that for NBA as well. That's likely going to be live tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then by this weekend. Just kind of depends on workload, right? Um, but the showdown stuff, you can utilize it. It's just using a lot of the same stuff that, uh, that you use for the regular range of outcomes. And then finally, the betting tools. So betting tools are still a little bit in work. Um, the stat-specific simulations are not going to work for tonight. They will work tomorrow. But you can use the game betting model, which is going to tell you, you know, win rates for players uh, or for teams based on projected spread and points. Um, you're also going to be able to use it for player projections here, right? Um, you're going to be able to see minutes, three-pointers, points, rebounds, all this kind of good stuff. And then the prop trend table, after five games, it gets populated, and we're going to be able to see based on the last 5, 10, 20 games, how well a player is trending forward and whether we should be betting their overs or unders based on those trends. And then the prop simulation is basically saying, um, you know, how often, and, and you can put in any prop that you find, right? If you go over to DraftKings and you see that Jason Tatum's points over is 20.5 at negative 150, you can simulate that prop, right? And then we can see that it's running and what it's going to show you is a distribution curve of how often he ends up hitting that that prop, right? So the implied odds 59%, he beats it 58% of the time. The mean outcome is 21. So you can see that over time, like the, the median right here, this is where we would want it to be. And he doesn't quite hit that. So at, at 20.5, if his prop for points was 20.5 and it was offered at negative 150, that's about the right odds. But say that it was 150, right? Then we can reset this, 
hit simulate prop. And if the odds were plus 150 that he scores 21 or more real life points, then what it's going to show us is that it does beat the prop 60% of the time. The implied props are 39, so we should make that bet. So this has been the majority of the tools over at Pater for NBA season. Um, if you are not a subscriber, I think you should absolutely subscribe. Um, the prices are the best in the industry, at bar none. Um, lots and lots of people who have said that they have got day passes and week passes and then just love the models and got used to them and now they can't use anything else. Um, really, really good product. So $40 a month gets you all everything over at Paydirt. 35 a month gets you the sport specific stuff. But like if you'd have to pay $70 a month for NFL plus NBA, you might as well just get the all, all access for 40. If you want to get yearly, you can 240 a year for uh, the entire NBA season, right up until April 30th. And then also we have weekly and daily subscriptions available. So uh, if you're not a, subscri a subscriber already, you absolutely should consider it. I think that it would really, really benefit anyone who wants to get better and wants to learn how to actually play DFS utilizing game theory and not just medium projections. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me in the Discord. Free to join. Just go here, go down in the Discord. Uh, and if not, then you know I, I hope you have a great NBA season. So thanks a lot for tuning in. I appreciate it. And let's go collect some trophies.